Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Is Ginger Ale Enough? Where we're talking about health, we're talking about wellness, we're on this healthcare journey with y'all, learning more as we go. And today, we have the pleasure of learning from somebody who's very special to me. Um, if you don't know already, my name is Naira. My mama calls me Chima, so if you hear her call me that, don't go around calling me my government name now. Um, but on this episode, uh, you know, it's Black History Month. Uh, we also just passed Valentine's Day, so very grateful to be with somebody that I love dearly. Um, we're talking about Black healthcare professionals. We're talking about black women um, in the healthcare industry and the impact that that has. Um, we're going to have some conversations about what your path was in the healthcare industry, um, how you pursued your medical career. Um, and I also want to hear about your unique contributions just as a person, just as a woman, as a black woman um, in that space. But before we get into that, here are some stats. So only 5.7% of US doctors are black. And in 2020, only 6.7% of registered nurses in the US were black, um, even though black folks make up an estimated 13% of the US population. So ex experts warn, um, that this shortage harms public health and action needs to be taken to increase representation in the medical field and to improve black people's health outcomes. So here with me, we have my mom. Mom, do you want to introduce yourself? Hello, my name is Silva Ikora. I'm Chima's mom. Yeah. <laughs> like she said, I call her Chima. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm very happy to be here. Yeah. What do you do? I'm a nurse. I'm a registered nurse. How long have you been a nurse for? I've been a nurse for over 30 years. Nice. Oh, my goodness. That's a time. That's a long time. Yeah. Um, so before we get into some questions, I just, just wanted to plug that Black Girl Vitamins has a monthly scholarship to provide financial support to Black women making a difference in health and wellness in their communities. To date, thanks to our customers, shout out to y'all, we've awarded more than $50,000 to female students who are making an impact on their communities and advocating for Black women's physical, mental health and wellness. So shout out to that. If you haven't heard about that, please make sure you go to our Instagram or go to our website to learn more about that. Um, okay, cool. So you've told us who you are. Um, what did you want to be when you grew up? Did you always want to be a nurse? Yes. For some mm -hmm. reason, I still, I still don't understand it up till today. Mm -hmm. You know, what really made me want to be a nurse? Mm -hmm. That was all I wanted to be. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't have a nurse in the family. I didn't have you know, anybody I knew that was a nurse, I, it just came to me like like it was a calling to be a nurse. Mm, that's beautiful. Um, what was the reason um, you felt like you wanted to be a nurse? Like, what what was it that drew you to that? I know you said you like taking care of people and things like that. Yes, yes. Yes, that was what drove me. I had this in me that um, I needed to help people mm -hmm. do things that they were not able to do for themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, so... Um, that drove me to do that. You know, I have a passion. Yeah, that's beautiful. That. I feel like that's important when it comes to any medical field or anything that's dealing with people um, is to have a passion or a calling for it. Otherwise, you know, that's a really important emotional part of it. Um, talk to us a, a little bit about also, you know, where you grew up, right? Like where you're from. Oh, mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I'm from Nigeria. I'm Igbo. Mm -hmm. I'm of the Igbo tribe. And um, <laughs> and um, I did my nursing in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. I did nursing and I did midwifery. And um, I got married, relocated to the United States in 1994. Mm -hmm. So I've been here since then. Yeah. For 20, 30 years now. Yeah. Yeah, for 30 years. 30 something. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so what specifically um, do you do as a nurse? Oh, I uh, currently I work in labor and delivery. Mm. Um, but when I came to this country, that wasn't where I started. You know, I started with a med surge setting mm -hmm. and I did a little bit of pediatrics. Mm. And then I had to go to, you know, a better paying place. Mm. So when I got there, what they had at that time was labor and delivery opening. Mm. So um, I ended up taking it. At first, I didn't like it because that wasn't what I had in mind. Right. But I, as I continued, I saw that that was okay for me to continue. Mm -hmm. And I've been enjoying what I'm doing there mm -hmm. with all my heart. I do my job, dil job diligently, yeah. and I enjoy it. Yeah, that's beautiful. Do you feel like there's any um, factors about your 
identity that um, affects the way that you navigate the workspace, you know, whether it's being black or being a woman, um, that has not only influenced, you know, the choices you've made as a nurse, but just like your experience overall? Okay. Well, in my profession, um, what really helps me, I don't say anything without mentioning my faith. I'm a Christian. Mm -hmm. So um, knowing God um, makes me work the way I work. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying I'm better than any other nurse, mm -hmm. but, you know, that um, there is empathy. You know, when, mm -hmm. I, when I take care of patients, I show empathy mm -hmm. what you would like to be done for you. Mm -hmm. I do it for them. Mm -hmm. And um, as a woman, as a nurse, mm -hmm. as a black nurse, mm -hmm. I can easily communicate with my patients, mm -hmm. you know, especially when it comes to, you know, people of color like me. Mm -hmm. um, I like to communicate with them like I do communicate and take care of every other color. Mm -hmm. It's just about being human. Mm -hmm. You know, I take care of them equally. But um, I also notice that sometimes they want to open up more to me, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, if I see patients from Africa, mm -hmm. you know, they might not want to open up to somebody of another culture, you mm -hmm. know. But when they see me, they feel very comfortable. They mm -hmm. smile and they're so happy mm -hmm. that I'm there and I'll be happy also, you know, yeah. that they feel the way they feel. And I listen to them and, you know help communicate their needs to the doctors. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's super beautiful. I I mean as someone who sits on the other side of that situation, um when a black nurse walks into the room, I feel relieved. I feel mm. like, okay, cool, you know. And it's not often, to be honest. <laughs> it's mm. not it's not that yeah, that yeah. often, but when it happens, I just feel like there's a level of care or attention to detail that I might get that I, I worry that sometimes I might not otherwise get. Um, mm -hmm. Are there situations like that that you feel like you've encountered where you've had to advocate for others, whether, or do you feel like sometimes you have to advocate for others, whether it's on behalf of a woman or just, you know, on behalf of a black person who you feel like is not being, you know, mm -hmm. cared for in the way they should. Like being, um, like um, being a woman, um, there are some things that I've experienced. I have children, mm -hmm. you're one of them. Mm -hmm. So yeah. <laughs> so sometimes patients might come in. There are some things they might complain about, which sometimes the doctors will be like, oh, look at her. And I'll be like, I've experienced that. Mm -hmm. I know what she's saying. Whether you're black or any of any other color, mm -hmm. you know, that goes for everybody. So, mm -hmm. um, and sometimes to um, some complaints of black people, there might be some little complaints they might present and um, might be underdiagnosed or mm. might not be, you know, taken seriously. Mm -hmm. But, you know, when I listen to them, I will, I usually try to advocate for them. Yeah. And like tell the doctors, we need to look into this, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, if they need like extra tests to be done, you know, we usually discuss, the nurses and doctors, we discuss about patient care to make sure they get the correct treatment they need mm -hmm. and correct care they need. Yeah, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, that's that's very true. Um, yeah, I feel like there are situations where I didn't know exactly how to advocate for myself. Mm -hmm. um, and if not for like another person being able to have that language, you know, that maybe I didn't have or even you being able to call you and being like, hey, you know, this this is how I'm feeling or whatever the case is. Um, because I, I myself am not a nurse, you know, so mm -hmm. I don't have all of the knowledge. So if the person who is a professional in the room is telling you, oh, there's nothing wrong with you, but there might be, you know, yeah. it makes you feel very um, kind of like helpless. So I'm sure yes. people really appreciate that. Um, so I wanted to ask, uh, when you first, you know, started doing nursing um, or when you first became a nurse, um, what were some of the challenges you faced, um, whether it was like back home or um, here in America? Like, I imagine, you know, trying to figure out where you fit or what, what the right hospital is or, you know, that that may be a little bit stressful. What are some of the challenges that you faced and how did you get through those things? Well, uh, you know, as a nurse, you meet like different, different um, areas, you know, mm -hmm. nursing is not like you said, it's not just one one area so 
when you start, you have to learn. Anywhere you go, you have to learn mm. things, you know. Um, it's not just going to school. It's not just um, taking care of patients. You have to go to school, right? Mm. You have to write papers and all that. But that, you know, I went through all that. And um, the challenges were just like from one area to another. Like I've worked in different areas. Mm. And when you transit to another area to catch up. Like, like like I said, at first, I did not want to work in labor and delivery. Mm-hmm. So when I got there, for some reason, I don't know why I did not want to be a labor and delivery nurse mm-hmm. at first. I wanted to be in med source settings where mm-hmm. I worked before, and um, it was kind of challenging to me. So I was always saying, I hope I hope I'll finish with this and go. And then they were telling me, six months you can transfer. Mm-hmm. But time makes a whole lot of difference. Mm-hmm. With time, I started learning a lot and started enjoying what I didn't know. You mm-hmm. know, started enjoying working as a labor and delivery nurse. So mm-hmm. that was the challenge that I faced being there when I didn't really want to be there. Mm-hmm. But then with time, I developed interest. And that's where I want to be. It's like I don't even want to be anywhere else for yeah. now because it's a lot of experience I've got out there. So yeah. So that that's how I beat it. Just I don't think I knew that. With the floor. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even think I knew uh, that you uh, didn't originally want to be yes. a labor and delivery nurse. Mm. I don't think I knew because you do it so well and you speak mm. so like highly of it. Um, and I mean, speaking of this topic of um, representation, right? Um, and like care and things like that, you know, like black women have the mm. highest uh, maternal mortality rate um, at almost three times their mm. white counterparts. So it's like extremely important for there to be black nurses in labor and delivery, especially black nurses who care, mm-hmm. you know, black women who care. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, or do you have you since you've been working in labor and delivery, have you seen many black nurses um, or are y'all normally outnumbered? Well, um, I work in a multicultural, you know, hospital, Mm -hmm. so to say. My unit, hmm, we don't have a lot of black nurses in my area right now. Mm -hmm. Not a lot. So, but um, we're mixed. Mm -hmm. We're mixed. Yeah. So where, where I work right now, I would say that we are outnumbered. Yeah. So... Yeah. So we do our best, you know. Mm-hmm. Like I said, take care of everybody mm-hmm. as a human being that I am, mm-hmm. you know. Not discriminating, not looking at colors or anything. So when I look at you, I look at you as a human being. Mm-hmm. So um, we do our best and then do encourage um, the black patients, you know. Encourage them to also seek medical care. You know, if they think they might not be compliant, you know. Social worker follows up with them to make sure they, you know, mm. they follow up with the appointments and get the medical care they need. Mm. And um, if we think that there's some kind of things that are not being done equally mm. for both cultures, mm. like some tests that the black a black patient might need, mm. that is not being done. I can go and discuss. I go and discuss it with the doctors. Yeah. I think this patient needs this test, yeah. you know, to help with the diagnosis, you know. Mm-hmm. And it works. Yeah. And they do listen, you know. Sometimes they want somebody to step up and talk, discuss mm-hmm. things with them, yeah. you know. And it's all about the patient's um, welfare. Yeah. So, and it goes well. And I'm sure they're they're very willing to listen to. I mean, they should be willing to listen to they anybody's do. suggestion. But I'm sure they're very willing to listen to you because you've been doing this for a while. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you've been doing this for a long time. So I'm sure they trust your um, advice, and that's like super beneficial for the patients that you're, you're caring for. Yes. Um, so, were there any um, challenges that you faced, uh, like, or differences in practicing nursing here um, versus back home? In Nigeria, like, are there like differences? Like, are there any differences? Of course, <laughs> a lot, <laughs> a lot. You know, I'm from Nigeria. You know, there are a lot of things they have here: mm. medical services, equipment. We don't have those there. Mm. Not a lot. So, yeah, I had to learn a lot. It's a mm. lot different. A lot difference here. Yeah. Um, the way they practice is different. The, you know. 
back there, doctors would just like, it's like when they give order. Oh, the doctor is giving order. Things are just being done based on what. The, but here you can really, you know, discuss patient care with them mm -hmm. and even disagree with some of the treatments they might offer mm -hmm. or some of the orders. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I didn't see a lot of that happening <laughs> when I was back home. Right. I didn't see a lot of that happening. So that that means a lot. Yeah. That we can, you know, talk as professionals, mm -hmm. you know. And have the conversation. And exactly. And arrive at a decision mm -hmm. that would benefit the patient. Yeah. Because when I'm at the mm -hmm. hospital or, or mm -hmm. anything like that. I, I talk to the nurses more than I talk mm -hmm. to the doctors. So yeah. I feel like the person who would know what I'm going through more would be nice. the nurse who's been checking on me for, you know, I've, I haven't That's had true. many like extended hospital stays, but like you see the doctor, what, like twice maybe. <laughs> and like the nurse is the person who's coming to talk to you, check on you the entire time that you're there. So I think like it's important that y'all opinions are seen on like that same level because you actually have a, I would say a better understanding Yes. of what the patient is experiencing. Um, so are there any, like, you talked about ways that um, your opinions and your thoughts are respected. Are there ways that being a black woman um, in that space has been challenging, um, like, professionally? Um, or being a black woman, really, being an immigrant, um, you know, that type of thing? Well, not really where I work. Like I said, it's a multicultural, you know, area. Mm -hmm. So I've not felt um, discriminated against. That's good. Not, um, it's been working well. That's yeah. why I'm still there. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. No, that's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. I think that's cool. Um, that's also a, a beautiful thing about the place that you work, that there's, you know, a lot of different types of people there. And not mm -hmm. even just for black patients but patients of all different cultures Races, feeling yes, yeah feeling like so. there is someone there that they can connect to i think that's a beautiful thing so how do you how do you care for yourself you work nights mm -hmm. mostly you've been working nights for as long as as far oh back my as my life. brain stretches <laughs> <laughs> so so how do you um and i mean even if you didn't work nights being a nurse um being any type of uh medical professional is very demanding a lot of standing Jay, a lot of standing, a lot of Tell standing up. Um, and so um, how do you take care of yourself? Like, how do you, what do you do when you're resting, when you're not at work? You know, how do you just relax? I like to, you know me, I like to watch nice movies. Mm -hmm. I like to relax. <laughs> and apart from that, of course, I have to read my Bible and pray mm -hmm. that first. Pray must and be needed, now. yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then I like to talk to people listen to like friends that's mm -hmm. when i have time to like call them relax and have a good discussion with them mm -hmm. and i also make sure i get enough rest mm -hmm. like you said i've been working nights all my life so mm -hmm. um i've always worked nights and uh, mostly because of you guys mm -hmm. children Sorry. when they are <laughs> little from then it, it helped but I continued. Mm -hmm. I got used to it and I continued. So I have to make sure I get my sleep. Mm -hmm. And when I sleep, I turn off my phone. Mm -hmm. I put my phone on silence and I get a good sleep. <laughs> when I wake up, I can look at my missed calls. So mm -hmm. I don't let myself, you know, anything wake me up in between. So then my head is going to start aching or something. Mm -hmm. So then... I'm learning more to, you know, try to relax more. Mm -hmm. Call you guys. Hey, where can we go? Mm -hmm. Can we go somewhere fancy? Yeah. And I need a uh, comfort food. To yeah. Eat. So I'll be calling everybody. <laughs> and go and get then, our feet done. <laughs> and then I know stuff like that. So it helps. Yeah. It helps a lot. So how do you, that's how. Mentally, like how do you, because um, I know that sometimes there are things that y'all can deal with that are very heavy. You're dealing with people, mm -hmm. right? You know, how do you recover or create space for yourself to you know take care of your mental health while you're working and after work while i'm working like i said everything i do i pray about it mm -hmm. prayer helps me a lot mm -hmm. a lot you know so helps me calm down sometimes i cry mm -hmm. depends on what is going on be it with the kind of um case that i i have mm -hmm. Or with working with co-workers, you know, we're human beings. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it could be overwhelming. Mm -hmm. I can go to the locker room, go to a quiet place, go to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. I cry and mm -hmm. then I pray. Mm -hmm. 
and I come out mm -hmm. and continue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that helps me a lot. That's so real. Sometimes <laughs> a, a good cry is necessary uh -huh. just to yeah. like cry it out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then get up and go back to it. it. But like creating space for yourself to be human, like remind yourself that like, it's okay. Yeah. Um, even though you're at work, you're still a person um, and yeah. dealing with other people in a very stressful situation or in what can be very stressful situations. Um, do you ever feel like burnt out? And what do you do about that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that <laughs> I well in in that moment, you know, I I just try to calm down mm -hmm. and you know do one thing at a time. Mm -hmm. Like I always tell myself, you can only do one thing at a time. Mm -hmm. Even if you have one thousand patients and you have a few nurses, as is going on in a lot of places now, you have to try to prior prioritize. You know. Mm -hmm. Who needs the care first? Mm. Who needs this care urgently? Mm. So then you list them like that and take care of those ones first mm. and then go from there. You know, it's not easy. You know, being on my shoes, you have to be on wear comfortable shoes to mm. be able to walk around. Mm. Sometimes you need to change shoes <laughs> <laughs> because of the pain. You know, some shoes give you pain and you might need to change shoes. Mm. So you keep going. So that's how we do it. And at the end of it, and what really helps me is I always think at some point the shift is going to be over. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that really helps me looking forward to that end of shift. That is going to come at a time, mm. at a point. And it does come. And then you'll be able it to go come home. And I'll be endless. like, my shift is over. <laughs> so that's yeah. just it. What is a moment where you felt um, like, or what are moments that have made you feel like happy or invigorated by the work that you do? Um, or times that you felt like accomplished by the work that you're doing, or maybe you like delivered a, a level of care that you saw had an impact. Um, oh yeah, those times where, will be times where, well, patient satisfaction, mm. you can tell we're all human beings. There's mm. no way you can satisfy everybody. Mm. So. We've had patients that will, no matter what you do, mm. they will complain. Mm. They will say bad things to you. You just just let it go and um, just keep doing your job. Mm. And um, But we've had times when you feel really accomplished. Oh, my God, everybody's happy. And um, I work in the delivery room. Our deliveries went smoothly. Mm. No complications. I usually say, thank God everything went well. Mm. We had nobody bleeding out. We had nobody that we had to rush to a station and running back and forth. And everything goes well. Then I, I do feel accomplished, you know, those times. And I go home very happy. Mm. You know, it's not every day that you go home very happy, you know. Mm. Sometimes you go home with a heavy heart. Mm. You know, oh my God, this could have been done like this or, you know, or, you know. But that, that patient satisfaction and um, the uh, success of everything and, you know, no complications mm. in the cases that we had to deal with makes me happy. Yeah, that's beautiful. So what advice do you have to anybody who is aspiring to uh, be a nurse or go into medical field at all? Because, mm -hmm. you know, speaking of crying, I, you know, <laughs> when I originally went to school, I was like, I'm going to be a nurse. And I took intro to health professions. I don't know mm -hmm. if you know this story. I might have told you this story. Mm -hmm. I took intro to health professions yeah. and I, um, it was like a chemistry based class. And my teacher was also the head of the department and she also wrote the book that we were reading. And so she was mm -hmm. really, really strict. Yep. <laughs> and like she, um, she made me cry one day and I literally got up and I walked all the way, I left the classroom, I walked all the way to the admissions office and I dropped the class. Cause I was like, I can't, I can't, I can't. And my advisor was like, just sleep on it, just sleep on it. So I left, I went to go drop the class, but I went home and I took a nap and I cried about it later at home. But I was like, it was so stressful. And I think, um, but the thing that like helps me the most, even though I didn't end up doing nursing was, um, you know, I had my roommate who was also taking the same class and also um, doing nursing. Um, and she was like, you know, there to help me and stuff like that. And that was the advice that other students who were, you know, ahead of us who had joined the nursing program gave us. They're like, you need the buddy system. You know, you need to have somebody there. Um, and so what's your advice to current nurses or people who are aspiring to be nurses? 
it's um I would advise them, you know, if you want to be a nurse, it's a good profession. Mm. It is. It's rewarding because it's not just something you're doing for yourself. Mm -hmm. When you do it for others, you know, you you get the reward. And um, but you have to be patient. Mm. You have to be a patient person. You have to be a good listener. Mm. And um, you have to have respect for everybody, no matter who. You know, you meet people from every culture in you know wherever you go, and there are people with different characters. Mm. So you have to be patient. You have to be a listener, and um, to deal with the kind of things that come with nursing. Mm. And um, some people go there for the money, and you can see it. Mm. You know, you have to be focused on your job. Like I'm here to take care of patients. Not to be at work and do other things. Mm. Social media, be on the phone mm -hmm. all the time. Then you, that is not acceptable. Mm -hmm. So you have to focus on what you are there for. Yeah. You're not ready for that. Then you're not ready to be a nurse. Mm. Yeah. yeah, that's very real. Mm. That's very real. That's beautiful. Mm. Um, what is your I'm gonna ask you for some a little bit of health advice, okay? You know, mm -hmm. since you since you uh, work in labor delivery, um, and obviously I'm assumed that it's women <laughs> for the most part that are there. Um, mm -hmm. Is there any um, ways that you uh, would advise people to take care of themselves in their daily life? What's your like number one health advice for for the girls? <laughs> <laughs> well, for women, for girls. Um, taking care of ourselves is very important. Mm. You know, rest. I always tell you, Chima, you need some rest. Mm. You know, it's true. the body I needs some rest, no matter what. You know, um, we know we all have to work and do one thing or another. Rest, especially your mental health, your spiritual health. Number one, you know, without God, you cannot do anything. So, spiritual health, mental health, you know, physical health, you know. Psychological, I mean, your social health too. Mm. You have to also go out, relax, you know, mm. do those things that make you happy. Go out with friends, enjoy yourself, exercise, which I'm not doing much of. <laughs> that's okay. You walk <laughs> around helps. at work all night. <laughs> <It helps. laughs> so that's my advice. Yeah, take care so, of yourselves. Yeah. Um, and also make sure you take your vitamins make sure yes. you take your vitamins um i yep. am <laughs> i enjoy taking my vitamins simply because they're gummy and i have to convince myself not <laughs> to eat more than the amount that i'm supposed to eat um so it definitely helps um but do what works yes. for you yes. um beautiful is there anything else that you wanted to add um Awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much. I think we covered it all. Thank yeah. you for having me. Yeah, of course. Um, and thank you for being here. Um, and thank you for doing the work that you do as well. Like I said, as someone who sits on the other side of, you know, those situations as a patient, um, I can tell the difference when there's somebody in the room with me that actually cares about my well-being, that actually cares about, you know, me in general um as a person and isn't just there because they're doing their job um and so thank you so much for, for me and probably from every other person that you have cared for thank in this you. long time that you've been on earth yes of course thank you yeah that's all i have for y'all once again this is my mom say hey mom just bring your mom to work day <laughs> um yes uh this has been another episode of is ginger Ale enough once again i'm your host naira we're missing aaron today but that's okay sending her love peace <laughs>